Well, after two weeks of gruelling negotiations, all-night sessions and political drama on the floor of the plenary last night, the Cancun Climate Summit has finally come to an end and come to an important agreement which will take forward processes to reduce pollution and drive clean energy investments. What we've seen from Cancun is two major achievements. One is that the UN climate change progress process has got its mojo back. We saw last night 192 countries sign up to an agreement which will allow further negotiations and build on progress that's been made over the last 12 months to get a comprehensive agreement to address climate change. Central to this, and the second key point, is we now have uh, countries that represent 80% of global emissions anchoring their targets that they put forward in the UN framework. That allows us now to build ambition by, through the negotiating process over coming years, to strengthen those targets to the level which we hope will address dangerous climate change. The other key outcomes that we've seen from Cancun include the establishment of a multi-billion dollar fund to help developing countries reduce their economic dependence on pollution, reduce emissions from tropical, the destruction of tropical forests, drive technology cooperation between countries, and critically to help the world's most vulnerable and poorest people adapt to the impacts of accelerating climate change. But this is not the end of the process. We are going to continue to see ongoing negotiations over coming years. And what's also evident in Cancun is regardless of what happens in the halls of the UN, countries are acting to limit pollution and drive clean energy investments. For example, we saw in the, la in the last couple of days of Cancun, South Africa put forward a proposal that it was going to put in place a price on carbon on its power sector to build on its already substantial measures to drive clean energy investment. So while we can celebrate, to an extent, the outcomes in Cancun, we can't forget that ultimately it's countries in their own jurisdictions that reduce pollution and that is where ultimately we need strong action. What we've seen in Cancun uh, is an important foundation but what we're also seeing is that countries are already moving to drive clean energy investments to reduce their economic dependence on pollution and unlock the new industries and the new jobs that are going to ensure they remain competitive in the low carbon world. So the message to Australia from Cancun and from outside the halls of the UN is that countries are acting to limit pollution. They are gaining first mover economic advantages as we move into the low carbon economy. And Australia, as we move into this year, needs to ensure that it gets a limit and a price on pollution so it can meet the commitments it made in Cancun, but also ensure that it's not left behind and outcompeted by those countries who are driving clean energy investments. Thank you.